live from Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube covering Spark Summit East 2017. Brought to you by Databricks. Now here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and George Gilbert. Welcome back to the Cube, everybody. We're here in Boston. The Cube is the worldwide leader in live tech coverage, and this is Spark Summit hashtag Spark Summit. And Robbie Strickland is here. He's the Vice President of Engines and Pipelines. I love that title for the Watson <laughs> Data Platform at IBM Analytics, formerly with the weather company that was acquired by IBM. Welcome to theCUBE, good to Thank see you. Thank you, good to have so you. So it's my here. standing tongue in cheek line is the industry's changing, Dell buys EMC, IBM buys the weather company. That's right. Wow, that sort of yeah. says it all, right? But <laughs> it was kind of this really interesting blockbuster uh, acquisition. Great for the folks at the weather company, great for, for IBM, so give us the update. Where, where are we at today? So it's been an interesting first year. You know, actually we just hit our first anniversary of the acquisition right. and a lot has changed. You know, part of my role, new role at IBM, having come from the weather company, is you know, a byproduct of the two companies bringing our best, <coughs> excuse me, our best analytics work and kind of pulling those together. I don't know if we have some water, but that would be great. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, so let me, let me <laughs> chat for a bit. Thanks. Feel, feel free to clear your throat. So we were at um, IBM, the conference at the time was called IBM Insight. It was the day before the acquisition was announced and we had David Kenny on. Now David Kenny was the CEO of the weather company. And I remember we were talking, I was like, wow, you got a, such an interesting business model. And, mm -hmm. You know, what, and off camera, I was like, what do you want to do with this company? You guys are like prime, you're going public, you're going to sell this thing? I know you have an M&A background. And, and he goes, ah, oh, yeah, we're having fun. And the next day was the announcement that That's I right. bought the weather company. I saw him later, I'm like, ha And <laughs> now he's the Wat leader of the Watson Group. Which That's right. Which is part of our, uh, the weather company joined the Watson Group. And, and the cloud and analytics groups have come together as in a recognition that analytics right. and cloud are peanut butter and jelly. That's absolutely oh, right. And David's running that organization, right? So That is absolutely right. So it's been an exciting year. It's been uh, an interesting year, a lot of challenges, but I think where we are now with the Watson data platform is a real recognition that, that this is the, the use case where we want to try to make data and analytics and machine learning and, and operationalizing all of those, you know, that, that that's not easy for people. And we need to make that easy. And our experience doing that at the weather company and all the challenges we ran into have informed the, the organization, have informed the, the roadmap and the technologies that we're, you know, we're using to kind of move forward on that path. And, and the Watson Data Platform was announced in, I believe, October. That's uh, right. You guys had a big announcement in New York City and you took many sort of components that were you know, viewed as you know, individual discrete That's right. functions and brought them together in a single data pipeline, is that right? That's right. So maybe describe that a little bit for our, our audience. So the vision is, you know, one of the things that's missing in the market today is the ability to easily grab data from some source, whether it's a, a, a database or a Kafka stream or you know, uh, some sort of streaming data feed, uh, which is actually something that's often overlooked. Usually you have platforms that are oriented around streaming data, data feeds, or oriented around you know, data at rest, batch data. And one of the things we really wanted to do was, was uh, sort of combine those two together because that, I, we think that's really important. So, so to be able to easily acquire data at scale, bring it into a platform, orchestrate uh, complex workflows around that. So with the objective, of course, of data enrichment, ultimately what you want to be able to do is take those raw signals, whatever they are, and turn that into some sort of, of enriched data for your organization. And so, for example, we may take signals in from a mobile app, things like, beacons, usage beacons on a mobile app, and turn that into you know, a recommendation engine so we can feed that, feed real-time content decisions back into a mobile platform. Well, that's really hard right now. It requires lots of custom development. It requires you to essentially stitch together your pipeline end to end. It might involve you know, a machine learning pipeline that runs you know, uh, a training a training pipeline, it might involve, that's all batch oriented. So you land your data somewhere, you run this machine learning pipeline, maybe in Spark or Hadoop or whatever you've got. 
uh, and then the results of that get fed back into some data store that gets merged with your, uh, your online application. And then you need to have a RESTful API or something for your, uh, your application to consume that and make decisions. So our objective was to take all of the manual work of standing up those individual pieces and build a platform where that is just, that's what it's designed to do. It's designed to orchestrate those, those multiple combination of real time and batch flows and then click with a click of a button and a few configuration options, stand up a RESTful service on top of whatever the results are. You know, either at an interim stage, you know, or at the end of the line. And, and you guys gave an example, you actually showed a demo at, that, at the announcement. I think it was a retail example and you showed a lot of what would traditionally be batch processes and then real time a recommendation came up and completed the purchase and the, the inference was this is an out of the box software solution. That's right. And that's really what you're saying you've developed. It's not, I mean, a lot of people would say, oh, it's IBM, they cobbled together a bunch of their old products, stuck it together, put an abstraction layer on and wrapped a bunch of services around it. I'm, in, I'm hearing that's exactly right. that's it's just web sphere, that's, that's just web sphere <laughs> repackaged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. No, it's not so, that. All right. So, so one of the things that we're trying to do is, <laughs> if you look at you know, if you look at our cloud strategy, I mean, this is really part and parcel. I mean, it's 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 the the nexus of our cloud strategy is the Watson Data Platform, and you know what we could have done is we could have said, let's build a fantastic cloud uh, and compete with Amazon or Google or uh, Microsoft. But you know, what we realized is that, that, that there is a certain niche there that of people who want to take individual services and compose them together and build an application, mostly you know, on top of you know, just, just raw VMs with some additional, you know, uh, let's stitch together something with Lambda or stitch together something with you know, SQS or whatever it may be. Right. Our objective was to sort of elevate that a bit, not try to compete on that level, and say, you know, how do we bring enterprise grade uh, capabilities to that, uh, to that space? Enterprise grade data management capabilities, end to end application development, machine learning as a first class citizen, in a, in a cohesive experience, so that you know, the collaboration is key. We want to be able to collaborate with, you know, business users, data scientists, data engineers, uh, you know, developers, API developers, the consumers of the, the, the end results of that, whether they be, you know, mobile developers or whatever. One of the things that, that is, is sort of key, I think, to the vision is that these roles that we've traditionally looked at, if you look at the, the way that tool sets are built, they're, they're very targeted to specific roles. The, the data engineer has a tool, the data scientist has a tool. And, and what's been the, the difficult part is, is the boundaries between those have been very firm and the collaboration has been difficult. And so what we have, it, we, we draw the personas as a Venn diagram because it's very difficult, especially if you look at a smaller, smaller company and even sometimes larger companies, the data engineer is the data scientist. You know, the, the, the developer who builds the mobile application is the data scientist. You, you just, and in some larger organizations, you have very large teams of data scientists that have these artificial barriers between the data scientist and the data engineer. So how do we solve both cases? And, and I think the answer was, for us, a platform that allows for seamless collaboration where there is a, there's not these clean lines between the personas that the tool sets, you know, easily move from one to the other, and if you're a, if you're one of those hybrid people that works across lines, that the tool feels like it's one tool to you, but if you're two different teams working together, that the, that you can easily hand off, and so that that was one of the key it objectives we're trying. Definitely to an innovative component of, of the announcement for sure. Go ahead, George. That's right. So, so um, help us sort of bracket how mature this end-to-end -end tool suite is in terms of how much of the pipeline it addresses, you know, from the data origin all the way to, um, you know, a trained model and deploying that model. Sort of what's there now, what's left to do? So there are a few things we've brought to market. The, probably the most significant is the data science experience. The data science experience is oriented around data science and has as its sort of central interface 
uh, uh, Jupyter notebooks, uh, as well as you know, we brought in our studio and those sorts of things. The idea there being that you know, we'll start with the collaboration around data scientists. So data scientists can use their language of choice, collaborate around data sets, uh, you know, save out uh, the results of their work and have it consumed either publicly by some other, you know, some other group of data scientists, but the collaboration among data scientists, that was sort of step one. Um, there's a lot of work going on that's sort of ongoing, not ready to bring to market around how do we simplify machine learning pipelines specifically, how do we bring governance and lineage and you know, uh, catalog services and those sorts of things. And then the, the, uh, the ingest, one of the things we're working on that's, that we have brought to market is, is our, our product called Lyft, which connects as well, and that's bringing large amounts of data easily into the platform. Uh, we have, there are a few components that have, that have sort of been brought to market. Uh, DashDB, of course, is a key source of data, Cloudant. So one of the things that we're working on is some of these existing technologies that actually really play well into the ecosystem, trying to tie them well together, and then add the additional glue pieces. And some of your information management and governance components as, as well. Now maybe that is a little bit more legacy, but they're you know, proven. And I don't know if the exits and entries into those systems are as open, I, I don't know, but, but so there's some capabilities of, there. Speaking of openness, uh, that's actually a great point. So if you look at like, the IIG suite, yes, right. it's a great on-premise suite. And one of the challenges that we've had with in, in, in sort of past IBM cloud uh, offerings is a lot of what has been the MO in the past is take, take a great on-prem solution and, and just try to stand it up as a service in the cloud. Mm. You know, which in some cases has been successful, in other cases less so. One of the things we're trying to look at with this platform is, how do we leverage A, open source, so that whatever you may already be running open source on-prem or in some other provider, that it's very easy to move your workloads. So we want to be able to say, if you got 10,000 lines of fraud detection code in Hadoop MapReduce, you, you, don't need to, you don't need to rewrite that in anything. You can just move it. And you know, the other thing is where, where our existing legacy tech doesn't necessarily translate well to the cloud, we, our first strategy is find, see if there's any traction around an existing open source project that satisfies that need and try to see if we can build on that. Mm -hmm. Where there's not, we, we go cloud first and we build something that's tailor-made to the yeah. cloud. So who's the the first one or two customers for this um, platform? Is it like IBM Global Business Services where they're building you know, the semi-custom industry apps? Or is it the very, very big and sophisticated like banks and telcos who are doing the same? Or have you gotten to the point where you can push it out to a much wider audience? So, uh, that's a great question. And it's actually one that, you know, that is, is a source of lots of conversation internally for us. You know, if you look at where the data science experience is right now, um, it's a lot of individual data scientists, you know, small, small companies, those sorts of things coming together. And a lot of that is because some of the sophistication that we expect for enterprise customers is not quite there yet. So we wouldn't expect enterprise customers to necessarily be, you know, onboarded uh, as quickly at the moment. But if we look at sort of the, so I guess there's maybe a medium term answer and a long term answer. I think the long term answer is definitely the enterprise customers, you know, leveraging IBM's uh, huge entry point into all of those customers today. There's definitely a, a play to be made there. Um, and one of the things that we're differentiating, we think, over an AWS or Google is that that we're, we're trying to answer that use case in a way that they really aren't even trying to answer it right now. And so that, that's one thing. The other is, you know, going beta with a, a launch customer that's, that's, that's a healthcare provider or a bank where they have all sorts of regulatory requirements, that's more complicated. And so we are looking at, in some cases we're looking at, at those banks or healthcare providers and trying to carve off a, a small niche use case that doesn't actually fall into the category of all of those regu regulatory requirements so that we can, we can get our feet wet, get some, you know, the tires kicked, 
those sorts of things. And in some cases, we're looking for uh, sort of less traditional enterprise customers to try to, to launch with. So that's an active uh, area of discussion. And one of the other key ones is the weather company, trying to take the weather company workloads and move the weather company workloads. I wanted to come back to the weather company. When you did that deal, I was talking to one of your executives and, and he said, why do you think we did the deal? I said, well, you got 1,500 data scientists, you get all this data, it's, you know, it's the future. He goes, yeah. And it's also going to be a platform for IoT, for right. IBM. And I was like, hmm, I get the IoT piece, how does it become a platform for IBM's IoT strategy, can you, can you is that really the case? Is that, is that transpiring and how so? So it's interesting because that was, that was definitely one of the key, uh, key tenets behind the, yeah. the acquisition. And what, what we've been working on so hard over the last year, as, you, as I'm sure you know, you know, sometimes boxes and arrows on an architecture <laughs> diagram and reality are, are, are more challenging. Go do that. And, and so, <laughs> so what, we've, what we've had to do is reconcile a lot of what we built at the weather company, existing IBM tech, and the new things that were in, in flight, and try to figure out how can we fit all of those pieces together. And so, it's, it's been complicated and, you know, but also good, because there are, there were, in some cases it's just, people and expertise, and bringing those people and expertise and leaving some of the software behind. In other cases, it's actually bringing software. So, you know, the story is, is obviously in, in where the rubber meets the road more complicated than what it sounds like in the press release, but, you know, the reality is we've combined those teams and they are all moving in the same direction together with various bits and pieces from the different teams. Okay, so there's vision and then a roadmap to execute on that and it's going to unfold over several several years. That's right. Okay, good. Um, stuff at the event here, I mean, what are you seeing? What's hot, you know, what's going on with, with Spark? I think uh, one of the interesting things about sp with, with going on with Spark right now is a lot of the optimizations, especially mm -hmm. things around GPUs and you know and and that, and and we're we're pretty excited about that. Being a hardware manufacturer, you know that's yeah, that's something that is interesting to us. We we run our own cloud. We we can where where some people may not be able to immediately leverage those those capabilities. We're we're pretty excited about that, um, and also we're looking at some of the you know taking Spark and running it on power and those sorts of things to try to you know, leverage the hardware uh, improvements. So that's one of the things we're doing. All right, we have to leave it there, Robbie. Thanks okay, very much great. for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. It's theCUBE, we're live from Spark Summit East. Hashtag Spark Summit, right back. Since the dawn of the cloud, theCUBE,